hope you're going to have an awesome day today. Arrowverse here. Right now, I'm about to do, <clears throat> apologies, a small recap video. And then a breakdown trailer of episode 17. So right now in Central City, Barry's running around stopping muggers, robbers, including saving old ladies crossing the street. Courtesy of a guy texting while driving. No one texts while driving. Then Barry rushes over to Jill's house and looks like they're playing a tabletop game. This is actually Dungeons and Dragons, but there's other kind of words for it. It could be a LARP, but Joe has absolutely no idea how to play the bloody game. I know it took me a while how to learn how to play a game, but it's actually pretty fun if you get used to it. So Barry gets a text message and goes to his lap at CCPD. It's Captain Singh, but technically he's retired, so it's Singh. He wants to tell Barry, well, just say that he's happy to see him and also give him a little personal file that there's been robbery at it. Love Hamilton Institute. Now, at Hamilton, basically Chester also gets something on radar. It signifies itself on CCPD docks and technically... This is the device that was stolen, actually, and here's the big player in town. Technically, I'm going to call him a big player. He's just a minor little villain. So he turns on the device, a Temecular device, and it shockwaves Barry, sending a lot of nanonites inside Barry's cells. Now, these nanonites causes Barry to age rapidly and faster overnight. Barry, well, he grew 30 years older. Yes, Chester said that he's 30 years older. So right now, Barry is in his 70s. Well, technically 60s right now, almost 70. He's trying to see if he can still use his speed stir powers, which isn't really helping out. He sure could run, all right, but the other speed stirs powers he could use and harness, yeah, it's not going quite that well for him at the moment. He could run still, but... They don't know this, that every time Barry runs, he ages rapidly. So this is the second encounter he came in contact with the scientist. The scientist has a gamma ray. Barry tried to throw lightning at him, but the lightning bolt didn't even strike out of Barry's body. Then he throws the gamma ray right at Barry's chest. Boosh. Barry is now 10 years older. Yeah. Uh, it's affecting affecting his body on a molecular level, on a singular enzyme as well. Meaning, he's showing gray hair, he's showing old age on the outside. It's not just on the inside anymore, everyone. It's on the outside. Barry is furious. He's pretty upset and he's really stubborn like a stubborn old man. He finally found out who this scientist is. So Barry wants to track down his office and see if they could find anything impelling. But... Cecile says, you're not running anymore because I'm driving. So they want to maintain Barry's speed so that he don't, he doesn't have to use it and will age any further along. Singh is actually keeping Joe company in retirement, but Joe is not too thrilled. And so Singh takes Joe out to some coffee at Jitters. Meanwhile, back at the office, Barry and Cecile find a laptop with... An eerie coating on it, meaning Barry has 60 seconds before the hard drive is wiped out. So he pleads with Cecile and says, I could rush us to Star Labs, but that didn't happen. Barry actually rushed Cecile all the way to the Great Wall of China. I know, it's insane. So Barry finally arrives back at Star Labs. Chester was able to save the hard drive. By, by millisecond, he was able to save it, which was great, incredible. Then they found out what the scientists actually stole the second part. It was an amplifier that was stolen. Meanwhile, Singh is giving advice to Joe about his early retirement. Now, this amplifier device, they figured out what the scientist really wants. He wants to be immortal. What I mean, immortal means he wants to live forever. So he's trying to suck out the age out of everyone in Central City until they become ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So Barry has to stop this device from 
spreading all over Central City, killing everybody in there. So Barry cuts off his legs off of the force field dome. He ages 100 years old. So I guess that's what Barry looks like when he's 100 years old. But technically, we need to take off that mask so we can see it all. Then the amplifier gets destroyed. Yes, he cut off its limbs and Barry, he's young again. I can't say the same for the scientists. He sure is one hell of a old geezer. Yeah, now he's sent to Iron Heights and he only has a few years left on his bid. Other than that, Barry's admiring how good he looks in the mirror. Chester says, well, Barry... You're no longer 30 years old. You're actually 29, which means you're going to have a 30-year-old birthday party coming up soon. Birthday party, all right. So what's it been? One week later, they still haven't found Iris or kept searching. All right, I guess they'll search for Iris probably like two, three episodes from now. So Sing joins Team Flash at the table to play a tabletop game. We see Joe with the bottle of whiskey and uh, I guess he's inside a wizard hat and wizard costume. He's about to play and he read the rules. So he's so tuned into the game. Then Barry gets a phone call from Carla. Carla calls up Barry calling upon Katie. Well, Caitlin, because she's been MIA for quite some time, especially in this episode. So Barry goes over to Caitlin's house. She won't open the door. He faces his way through the door and he sees all this lab equipment. And then he finally sees Caitlin and says, your mother has been calling me. I thought you were staying at your mother's house. Where have you been? And she says, Barry, don't get upset or anything like this, but I think I can bring Frost back to life. And also by using this mirror gun, I could actually make another Frost come outside of my body and Barry, I, he's in knots all for it right now. She also says something that really pissed Barry off, but Barry couldn't really get angry or show any emotion. She said, wouldn't you want your mom and dad to come back alive if you get the chance? This is risky and dangerous. Basically, Caitlin wants to resurrect the dead again. Hasn't she learned anything from Ronnie? So Barry has to destroy all her lab equipment to get it through her thick head. This is some dangerous stuff you're doing. Barry apologizes. He says he's sorry, but uh, I guess Caitlin is in despair right now. The thing is that um, I've been reading all over Instagram and Twitter. People kept on saying that Barry was a real dick in that episode for doing that to Caitlin. But come on now, she tried to resurrect Ronnie and... This acronym killed like 50 people when she resurrected Ronnie's body. All right, it's time for a breakdown. You guys ready for this? Let's dive right into it, shall we? Barry arrives at a building. Inside this warehouse, this building, people are thanking Barry for, I guess, suppose, uh, taking out the fire and whooshing them all out uh, one by one. Barry says, are you sure I did this? Really? Barry thinks that, yes, there's something wrong. I have not been here before. I don't know what's going on, but Barry has found a few clues, which means he's talking to Chester. He says, yes, I think there's another speecher in town. Now, this speecher is helping out people, just to let you guys know, but he's also hurting other people at the same time. So it's not a hero. It's a vigilante, or so Barry's thinking. So Barry goes all the way to Purgatory, uh, yes, and he tries to see Thawne, and Thawne says, so you must be very, very desperate or scared to come all the way over here just to see me. What an honor, pleasure that is. So Barry thinks that Thawne has something to do with a new speech or in town. What do you guys think about that? My guess is it might be Zoom. Messing with Barry. Because Zoom did say that he was making a comeback. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are new, subscribe to the channel. So I'll see you all in the next video, of course.